Let us pray. O God, who makest us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of thy Son, Jesus Christ, grant that as we joyfully receive him for our Redeemer, so we may with sure confidence behold him when he shall come to be our judge, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was the first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My dear friends, I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas, and I want to thank you for taking a moment out of your Christmas Eve to pause whatever you're doing and to contemplate a bit on this joyous celebration of our Lord Jesus Christ's birth. So wherever you are, if you're in Winston-Salem, or if you're around the country or around the world watching us on Facebook or on YouTube, Welcome and Merry Christmas. Of course, this is not how things are supposed to be. We're not supposed to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ on Facebook or on YouTube only. 
Now, if we were streaming this live at midnight mass and you were watching from home because you live out of town or for whatever reason you couldn't make it, that would be one thing. Or if you belong to another church and you're tuning in just to see what other churches are doing, like I always do on Christmas Eve when I watch the Pope from the Vatican, that would be something else. But we're not creating this video because of those reasons. We're doing it, of course, because of COVID. COVID will keep the majority of us from receiving communion on Christmas Eve, which is the whole point of coming to church on Christmas Eve, to receive communion. The Christ Mass involves the celebration of the Most Holy Eucharist. But we can't do that unless we are together. So this is not meant to be a substitute. I do hope it's edifying, but it's meant to provide some, some food for our meditation on this most joyous night. And I'm glad you're with us. You know, over the past few days, as we have thought long and hard about how we are going to ring in Christmas on a virtual platform, because of COVID, because of the weather forecast, the majority of our folks will be watching online. I couldn't help but always go back to the thought about how absolutely, and if I may create a word, un-Christmas this whole experience has been of trying to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ online, through a camera, through the lens of a digital medium, because it is antithetical to everything that we profess about our faith, about Jesus Christ, and especially about this night where we celebrate His birth. Jesus Christ is the Word made flesh. He came and dwelt among us. God, to redeem us from the plague of our sin, did not social distance Himself from our condition. Quite the opposite. He came to dwell among us, to take on our sin, so that we may throw it off. And of all the great images that we love about Christmas, they all speak to this, about the baby Jesus born in a manger, among the straw and the animals and the filth, about the angels proclaiming the birth of Jesus to the shepherds, about the magi following the star to come see this great miracle that had been made known to them. None of it was virtual. It was all very real. It was all very much in the flesh. And of course, we know how absolutely important being together in the flesh is. I'm thinking right now of a parishioner that we have who has been battling COVID and she's in a nursing home, of course unable to see family and friends, hasn't seen her family since the pandemic began in March. We can wave at loved ones through a glass pane in the window, we can FaceTime, and that's something. But it's not the same thing as being together. It's not the same thing as a physical touch. And I imagine we all, on this very night even, have made tremendous sacrifices, both here in Winston-Salem and certainly our friends all across the globe. We have not been able to visit family and friends as we normally would, which means the grandparents haven't been hugged, parents and children haven't been kissed. It's all necessary. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. It's all necessary, all the things that we've been asked to do, but it's also, also wrong. This is not how things are supposed to be. But I suppose that may be the greatest illustration, honestly, of why Jesus Christ was born and why Jesus Christ died for us. The plague of sin, which is our impulse to be selfish and to exploit and to hurt ourselves and others in the process, regardless of the consequences, has done all of the very things that we have come to despise and resent about this pandemic. Like a mask 
Sin covers our true self. We wear a mask to present, prevent the disease from spreading, but sin is a mask that covers us, that makes the contagion permanent. Sin drives us away from our true self, which is our life in God. Those impulses that we must fight are those impulses that draw us away from the love and the presence of God. Our selfishness divides us. We drive wedges between one another. We exploit and we all but guarantee there will be a distance between ourselves and others and a distance between ourselves and God. And of all the years, this pandemic notwithstanding, we've come to understand how deep those divisions can run. The plague of sin makes us feel alone and that we are isolated. And that loneliness and isolation breeds anger and resentment. Last Friday, my wife, being a labor and delivery nurse, received the first round of the COVID vaccine. Now, I certainly don't pretend to understand how vaccines work, but I do understand these two things. I understand that the vaccine that she received will teach her body how to fight off the virus if she gets it. That's the first thing that I understand. And the second thing that I understand is she had to be physically present to receive the vaccine. Someone had to be in contact with her. You couldn't be vaccinated over Zoom. Jesus Christ is the great physician. He took on our sin and defeated its power by his own death. It was an actual defeat and not a virtual one. He was present at the focal point of the worst of humanity, and he took it all on. He went to the places in our nature that we don't dare to examine. He went to our brokenness, to our weakness, to our anger, to our exploitation, to our prejudice, to our insecurities, to all of our self-loathing. He went to all of it, and he took it on himself, and it died with him. He did that so that we may recognize those impulses when they begin to rise within us, and we may defeat it by his grace. The birth of Jesus Christ is the unmasking of God's love. He was veiled in the flesh so that we may see the true face of God. He dwelt among us, destroying the structures of fear that drive us apart. And the shepherds made haste to see him. No one, not angel or shepherd, will ever again be truly isolated or alone. No, we are not supposed to celebrate Christmas like this, and I pray with every fiber of my being that we'll never have to do it again. And as necessary as all of this is, and of course it is, we should not get comfortable with it, and we certainly should not prefer it. We can and should do our duty, but at the same time, we can grieve the loss. But maybe, my friends, just maybe, it will all remind us why we celebrate this feast and why we believe what we do in the first place. Not because of lights of the season or the gifts that we give or receive or some nebulous comments about love or goodwill, but because God does not love us from a vast distance. God has not virtually saved us. He was born in a stable, and now he is present in the sacrament. Veiled in flesh, that great carol says, the Godhead see. Hail the incarnate deity. Pleased as man with man to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth 
born to give them second birth, risen with healing in his wings, light and life to all he brings. Hail the Son of Righteousness, hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace. Hark the herald angels sing, glory be to the newborn King. Amen. Devoutly we approach your cradle, Lord, to find the one of whom the prophet spoke. And here behold the mighty God of thunders lying helpless on the straw. O grant us some of this humility, that we may conquer mightily the reign of sin within us. And grant us too the protection of your gentle mother, whose tender eye and loving heart attend your every wish. You who live and reign with your Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 